Hello and welcome back to the Global Hour with Kamal Nawaz, a place where you can have an intelligent discussion and a comprehensive discussion with detailed analysis. Today we have with us a very special guest, a person who uh, I'm honored to have known for many years, uh, who goes by the title of Sir Robbie. Uh, his full name is Ratib Rabi, who is the CEO and founder of the Holy Land Christian Ecumenical Foundation. Uh, while the name says a lot about the organization and their goals, we're going to talk about that. Uh, this particular issue, uh, the, the plight of Christians in the Holy Land, uh, although it doesn't receive enough attention, it has received some controversial attention in the last year or so, last two years in particular. We, uh, with, uh, with 60 Minutes, having a program on the topic of, uh, of Christians in the Holy Land that was highly disputed by the government of Israel, that was followed up by a, a show at the 700 Club or on the 700 Club with Pat Roberts, who disputed that the, that the Christians are suffering uh, in the Holy Land. So we uh, today we invited the, the Mr. Rod, who probably more than anyone else focuses on this topic and the preservations of Christians in the Holy Land. So without further ado, we're going to talk to Mr. Ratib and ask him. Um, per, the first question I'd like to ask is, tell us who are the Christians of the Holy Land? Tell us about who they are, where they came from, and their history in a quick, in a, in a, as quickly as possible. Uh, this is the, the Christian Christians, the Arab Christians of the Holy Land. They are the first who follow Jesus Christ. You know, if you, look, if you go to the Bible, Acts 2, 11, you know that at the Pentecost, when the church started, the Arabs were, were there. And we are the original uh, uh, Christians who believe in Jesus Christ, and we can face our ancestry to, to, uh, to Jesus uh, era. So we're talking about these uh, the the Palestinian Christians are the first converts to Christianity, who no. are, who presumably converted from. Uh, no, no, no. We didn't convert. We are not. Convert. We didn't convert. We are the original Christians. Okay. But the first belief that there were, you know, we were just uh, people, nation, you know, and the Arabs there, and we uh, believe in Jesus Christ. Well. We, the, and that would make the preservation of the Christian community all that much more important. Yes. Because... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. See, because we are the root of the Christianity. And we are the one Arab Christian who saved Christianity for over 2,000 years. And the Western uh, uh, church uh, or people, they, they didn't look at it that way that the Arabs who are saved their faith for 2,000 years. And before Islam, there were a lot of who are Muslims and they were Christians. And they converted to Islam when the Islam came uh, to the Holy Land. Well, I know, I know from my own family, who I, I'm, a, I, I'm a Muslim, obviously, and a Palestinian. Uh, my family's name is Nawash. I, you know, I remember many years ago, before one of my aunts died, and uh, my father said, she told me that our original name was Nawas, which is N-A-W-A-S. And that we originated from a Christian family. She and that actually wasn't that long ago. It was she saying it was about 130, 140 years ago. That history has pretty much died out with the new generation. But I remember being told this story at a young age. So that just goes to support what you're saying. Yes, this is your your ancestor, and they came from uh, a village called Baybe in Palestine. Is that right? I didn't yeah. even know that. Is that where Nawash comes from? Yeah, Nawash, Nawash, you know, in Arabic, yes. Oh. And we have some cousins here in this area in Washington. Yeah, but, I hear, <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. But one thing here, you know, that a lot of families now, you know, some of them are Muslims and some of them are Christians and now, and they carry the same last name. Well, let me, tell me this. Now, one thing, uh, before I move on to... Uh, why the West, the perception of the West of the Palestinian Christians or the Arab Christians? Tell us about the status of the Palestinian Christians today. Why are their numbers dwindling so much? And what is the Holy Land Ecumenical Foundation doing to try to slow down the exodus of Christians from the Holy Land? As you understand that the, the conflict. 
in the Holy Land is uh, uh, it is turned to be like I say it is a religious conflict between uh, between Islam and uh, Judaism. But in fact, it is a political one uh, between uh, uh, the Arab and Israelis over land. Because we are the Christians in the middle of it. We are under occupation. We are, uh, that occupation has been for a long time. Palestinian, uh, Arab, uh, uh, Christian and Muslim, they never have their independence. Always we are under occupation from the Ottoman uh, uh, Empire to the British, to the Israelis. All the time it was an occupation. Now the occupation became worse as we have in, 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 uh, in, in 1923 and then that time in the 20s, we were over 51% in Jerusalem, the population of Christians. What year was that? What year was that? Uh, in the 20s. Okay. Last century. Okay. And, and now we don't have about 10,000 Christians. We have now. What's left in Palestine? Only 50,000 Christians, and we have about 150,000 in Israel, and the rest are spread all over the world. And this is where we are looking at it. We have about over 700, 800 uh, thousand Palestinian Christians are in diaspora. And if you go to South America, like Chile, you have 350,000 Palestinian Christians. More than what we have in Jordan, Palestine, and Israel. And now in, in, in Salvador, you have about 60,000. In Honduras, about 20,000. They are spread all over. The reason for that, it is the occupation in, in the Holy Land. That's what because uh, that was of that occupation. That's what people uh, left uh, uh, their home. So, would you say that your goal is? To preserve the existing numbers, or are you also trying to get some people who have left to come back? You know, it is it's both actually. It is one most important to preserve. Uh, what I want to use to keep the presence of the Christians in the area for several reasons. First, for the West Christians, this is the roots. If you lose your roots, you know you are, you are out of it. Imagine for the Catholics if they go. For St. Peter's Square in Rome, and, and they find no Catholics. How, how do you feel as, as Catholics? If you, this is why we are saying, not only for Catholics, because most of our Palestinian Christians are Orthodox, then Catholic, then Protestant. And we are all together into that, and over there we don't have the luxury to say I'm a Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox. That's one. Second thing we are, we, we are after saving that for the root of the Christianity. Second thing is we are uh, the fight for peace in, in, in that area and because of the conflict. Because when when we think it is only uh, it is a religious conflict between Islam and Judaism, it's not true. That's it was very difficult to solve. But when it is the political one, could be solved because you know political uh, 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 conflict always come and go. And this is why we are in the middle of it because and we are as the Palestinians. You know, with the same like the Palestinian Muslims, we have the same history, inspiration, uh, language, everything except the faith. So uh, how do you reverse something like that? I mean, obviously, you have issue of economics, which is a big issue. I go to Bethlehem every year, for example, every December, and I see, you know, obviously a lot of tourists come, but you have a bus comes in through the checkpoint, drops the people off basically at the gate of the Nativity Church. They go in, come out. They, you know, the, the, the tour, the tour, the tour guide takes them from the church to the bus, and they're out. There are very few people that actually walk around the city that benefit, which and, and do not really benefit the tourist shops or or any of that. Which I know many Christians own. So how do you reverse? How do you how or, or what can you possibly do, or, or can anyone do actually to? To preserve the Christian community, is it an economic issue or is it a political issue? What can actually be done? Okay, I mean, here are the things with our seven main programs. To answer first directly your question about the immigrants who come to this land, there are about 1.5 million uh, uh, Christian uh, immigrants they come to this land. As you said, they go to the native, they get on the bus and they are out. Then that affects the Christian 
communities like Bahrain, where they don't buy the crafts and the souvenirs, you know, to take away from them. Second thing is that the employment is low. Third thing is, you know, when you don't have income, you don't have housing. And this is the three problems that uh, the Christians and the Palestinians in general in that area are facing. But for the Christians, they need housing and they need jobs. And these two things, we are very working heavily on that in order to keep the, the presence of the Christians, in, 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 especially in Bethlehem and Palestine at large, because they need housing. So how do you how do you how do you make housing more accessible to them and affordable? To start with, we fix houses because a lot of houses are deserted because or half of the house deserted because no maintenance for for less than forty fifty years. What we do, we come in, fix the house, and make it livable and change the conditions of the house. With that, we create jobs for people who are into this uh, industry. And even if you are not into the industry, we hire you. If you have your home, it's needs fix. We hire you to fix your home and we pay you money, you know, to fix your house too. And this is where we create jobs. Besides that, we have several other programs where we create jobs. Most importantly, we just started a, a call center in Vietnam, where, you know, to work on the American customer service, you could, uh, you could uh, call 800 numbers as it goes now to India or to the Philippines. Now could go to Bethlehem and this is why we are looking for, for companies to contact us in order to create their job by hiring us to their customer service. Well, you go, I want to go back to housing for a second. You said one of the things is that you actually work on, you give people money to, to work on their house. As, work as, on as their house. Yeah. yeah. What about new housing? I mean, if the, you know, even though the Christian community is 50,000, that's a lot more than it used to be maybe 20, 30 years ago in terms of actual number, even though it's much lower in percentage, if that community is to continue to grow, they're going to need new housing. Are you all able to help people, uh, for example, buy a new apartment or buy a new condo? How, how does that work? Okay. This here is where we touch on two, on two things. One is how to keep the Christians where they are now. First, we need to improve their living conditions. And this is what we are doing. Already we fixed about 400 houses. Okay. Imagine if you don't fix this, this is going to leave. We need first to keep them in, in the land. That's the first step, which we have still another thousand houses in, 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 uh, in, in uh, 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 need for repair. Now that's the applications we have. When we finish that, we, we will think about new houses. We started building new houses. We have about 48. Uh, uh, apartments we build, but that costs millions of dollars, and we will let's first keep the one who exists, you know, uh, in, in order to, to, to uh, in order to uh, go and, and uh, keep these people in, in the land. One. Okay, so and obviously, one second, let me interrupt you here. Both situations that you talk about, whether it's building new houses or or fixing old houses, where the, the common denominator there is money. Yes. So where do you get the money for that? Uh, How do you? We have, we have a lot of uh, angels who, who help us uh, to do that, uh, especially for the United States. Well, that leads me to the next question then. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I see, for example, uh, I mentioned earlier Pat Roberts and, and the 700 Club that, uh, who go to, to Israel, for example, and send contributions to Israel. Now, uh, I, I know they don't support Christians, so I, I wonder, you mentioned you are the foundation of the Christian community. I once heard one Palestinian minister describe, describe the, the Palestinian Christians, or, 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 or I, sh I should go back, he said the best export that the Palestinians ever had was Christianity. The number one export to the world was Christianity. So, well, you know, you have 1.6 billion Christians in the world. I wonder, do, do Christians in the world, who, in Europe, in the United States, do they not care about this issue? I, I, I guess I want to try to understand is what is the perception or the perception of Christians in Europe and the United States to, towards Christians in the Middle East? And why wouldn't you get, for example, again, I use him maybe somewhat sarcastically, but why wouldn't someone like Pat Roberts be interested in helping you? Why wouldn't rich Christian big uh, churches in the U.S. be interested in helping you? 
Phenotype evolution and evangelicalism uh, uh, that is a completely different type of Christianity. One. Let me tell you, you know, we have that uh, three types of Christians in, 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 in the West. One is supporting with uh, the Palestinian Christians because there are few of them anyway. Second one, they don't because of the ignorance of, of uh, saying Palestinians in general are all Muslims. And the second thing they are saying, you know, they are all terrorists, they are all bad people, the Palestinians, we don't want to touch that. But we do the education and the advocacy in order to reverse this and, and let them understand we are people too. And in every nation, we have the good, the bad, and the ugly in every nation. And we show them that Christians and Muslims who are moderate, they are for peace. The third one is uh, the evangelicals who are, you know, I don't want to say this because for the Christianity, the mainstream Christians, they are evangelicals, you know, like the uh, Presbyterians, uh, Lutherans, uh, uh, Episcopalians, Methodists, and others. They are mainstream Christians, they are evangelicals, but they are not the extreme uh, 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 on the other side, like uh, Pat Robinson, about saying you know, the, the Arab Christians don't exist, we have to support Israel. This is, this is the prophecy saying that, you know, the, 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 in order to go to heaven, you have to have the state of Israel. Israel wasn't exist at that time as a as, as state, was as a people, you know, at that time. And this is where, you know, going in Christianity, they don't mix politics with, with uh, uh, religion, but they do. But this is not Christianity. I mean, we are looking at it, at, at people, looking at people who need of peace and justice. And we look at the Palestinian people, that's what they need over there. And if Pat Robinson and the evangelicals understand that, they wouldn't be do that because I, I believe I'm not a theologian like them, you know, but this is, I believe it, that Jesus will not accept that at this time. Well, put aside, put aside the evangelical movement. Right. Certainly there are millions of Christian uh, right. Catholics in the world who are not evangelical. I mean, certainly, uh, you know, Catholics who happen to love their religion, who you know, whether whether it's the Latin American Catholics or European Catholics, it, it seems to me that maybe it's a matter of getting the message out for you. I, I'm trying to figure, uh, it seems to me that you have the, the, the message, if it gets out, to actually get a lot of support. But I guess what one thinks and what actually happens are two different things. And, uh, you know, how, how has your experience been, forget the evangelical, with the non-evangelical Western Christian? You see, this is why what we started as part of our movement is to educate Christians about Christianity and the origins of the Christianity. Because Christianity, a lot of Christians, they don't think it started in, in Jerusalem. They think, you know, some of the Protestants, they think it started in, in Europe, in England, in, in Holland. And some Catholics, they think it started in Rome. But look, the mother church is Jerusalem. The people who are there are Palestinians, Arabs, who are starting the church. These people, they need education. As I said in the beginning, we are not converts. We are the original Christians who follow Jesus Christ. We are the first followers of Jesus Christ because most of the Western Christians, they were somewhere in, in some, something where, you know, and they start believing and converted to Christianity. But we were the first followers. You know, that's why we don't call ourselves converts, you know, because we, Jesus came and right away we were behind him, you know, and this is why we we'll follow him. If we educate Americans and the Western Christians, they will come forward. And this is the experience we have. This is where the donation is coming mostly from Americans who found out about the truth and came forward. Well, you know, one thing, this reminds me, when, when, when 60 Minutes, I think it was last year, when they came out with their piece on Christians in the Holy Land, one thing that stuck out for me is they talked to a lady whose house, who, uh, whose house was right right next to the wall. They built the wall right around her house. And they told her, why don't you leave? The, the person from 60 Minutes told her, why don't you leave? She says, I'm not going to leave. This is our cross that we're fighting for. This is, uh, you know, so I guess what I heard from her is a person who are, understands that life is hard, but she felt, she knew she had a special responsibility uh, and that is preserving the Christian community. And the reason I mention this to you, it seems to me at this point, 
in addition to building houses or re remodeling houses, because money is finite at this point. Unless you find a way to get a lot of money, your ability to help is going to be limited in the short run. It seems to me that one of the ways is you're basically going to have to convince the local Christians to basically sacrifice and say that there's a, a bigger goal out there. Is that part of your message also? I mean, this is why we uh, create jobs for them and we, we fix their homes. Yes, because in Christianity we say, you know, the cross we have to carry as Jesus carried this cross for us. And this is why we are carrying our cross by, uh, by uh, resisting the occupation by being there. And this is where most of the Christians are there now, staying there because this is their homeland. It is, we have a program for children peace project where we bring students here with their teachers that spend uh, three, four weeks with American families. And they take them around, they, they show them everything, you know, and it, it takes me, them You mean Palestinian families, bring in American? It is both, but this one is Palestinian from there. They stay at, uh, and they go to school with one of the churches and they stay with American Christians. Okay. And after the war, you know, like uh, they say, they ask the kids, do you like to stay here? One of the kids said, I love your McDonald's, I love your food, I love you people, you are all good, but I'm in a place where our Lord was born, we don't have it here. And this is, this is the spirit we have as Christians now when, when, when we are living here. This is something. The other thing, you know, that's on the same uh, note, that one of the kids, you know, uh, when, uh, after the, the farewell event, you know, for these kids to go back, one of the uh, host mothers, you know, she said four weeks ago, I had concern to have a Palestinian kid to live in my house with my kids. But now I have a Palestinian son. Wow. Uh, and, and that's it changed the whole thing. They found out these kids, the Palestinian kids, they play football, they, they uh, play music, they dance, they talk, they even they are loved like the American kids do, you know, and they, they are the same people. They are people. You know, and these are who we are. Well, let me ask you this. Let's go back to demographics and numbers. You right. said there are 50,000 Palestinians in the West Bank. So I'm, I'm assuming that the, the majority of them are in Bethlehem, Beit Sahur, Beit Jala, Ramallah, and maybe to a much lesser degree, Riha. I'm guessing. Is that in right. Jericho, I mean? Right. Right. Is, that, are they, are they, is this correct? In that order, probably? Yes, yeah. We have about 30,000. Christian left in Bethlehem area, Bethlehem district, Bethlehem, Bethlehem and Bethlehem. We have about maybe 10,000 in, in Ramallah, but Ramallah was all Christians. And now we have other 10,000 spread with the villages in Jericho and the villages around Ramallah and other towns. Well, let, let's say, assuming you don't bring any new people, and assuming you convince the Christians to actually stay there, in terms of actual, uh, you know, childbirth, in terms of actual natural growth, uh, wh what are the practices and customs of the local Christians in terms of childbirth? Is it such that it would actually allow the community to naturally grow? I don't know the numbers. Is it similar to Western Europe where they have 1.5 children or, are they, or do they have enough children where they can replace their parents? No, uh, we have, this is one of the things, you know, we are now less than one and a half percent because of the birth, you know, to the Christians. And this is where the, the demographic, you know, is coming, the percentage is going down, you know, because, because of that. It's not like uh, with, with, with the Muslims, they have uh, a large number of kids, and with the Jews, where they come from all over, you know, to, to Israel, and these two numbers are growing. And our number is staying the same as the percentage growing along with the Christians. The same thing is with the Palestinian Muslims. They are mixed too. It's not some, something, you know, I'm, I'm saying only Christians, Palestinians. But the Muslims, we don't see it because it's lost population and we cannot see that number as, as we have with the Christians. But they are living with a good chance to move to the population. Well, no, I guess the question I had was going back to birth. I mean, I know it will be, you know, I know of some people who do go back. Like a few years ago, I, I had a friend and a partner who went back to Ramallah who's a Christian. But that's a, that's a rare thing, I'm guessing. Uh, I'm talking about in terms of childbirth. I mean, 
mean, th- this is significant too. Is that something part of your program where, and I hope this is not a stupid question, where you would actually convince people to have more children and uh, provide them support if they were to have more children, or is that something seen as too complicated to address? We don't think we want to do that. Never, you know, I mean, you know, we can to one. The second thing is that uh, it's, it's not, not the number one, just we need to keep a bit in the land, and this is something important. We focus on quality of people rather than quantity of pets. That's something you know we have to understand. And that's where we are trying to connect the people around the world. Maybe they don't come back to Palestine, but at least they come to visit and, and to be uh, have, to have a link with, with, with Palestine. And this is what we are working on in order to have that power, you know, internally and externally together, you know, in order to keep that presence of the Christianity and to be empowered in. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about Christians inside Israel and Jerusalem. Right. Now, you mentioned that the occupation, the difficult economic situation that brings is one of the reasons that Christians leave the West Bank. But two years ago, I had a tour of Nazareth, which is deep inside of Israel. Right. And a friend of mine gave me a tour, but even there, you're having churches closed down. I mean, there are actual churches who were, that were closed. One of the churches that I saw was a, a historic church in an area where, where I, I don't remember the story, but it, you know, but certainly it's concerned one of the activities of Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, if I remember correctly, he lived until he was forty in uh, in Nazareth. So why would you have churches closed down in place like even Nazareth if they're not uh, not facing the kind of conditions as in the West Bank? Let me tell you something, even the uh, Palestinian Christian Muslims in Israel, we have over a million Protestants, Palestinians, and Muslims, and Muslims, and Muslims. But these are very different and different class citizens. They cannot get certain jobs, they cannot get uh, clearance or security to work in the country. They, can, they, have, uh, they don't have the same privileges as in Palestine. This is where Palestinian Christians and Muslims are second class, and we call that Palestinian Christians as the third class group because they are they are the, the elite here. That's why they are closing. If they get the opportunity to leave and go somewhere else, right the way they do that, and they have better chances than the Muslims because uh, they're connecting with the world, uh, Western church, and they are educated. This is what they focus on a lot, and they have uh, when they come to the West. They can fit into the society better than the Muslims when they come here because already they have the faith the same thing, you know, and this is where they are more accepted than the Muslims. This is why they leave, uh, they leave. And we have the Christians uh, left and uh, immigrated even before the establishment of the state of Israel because of the, uh, of the Ottoman Empire where they were persecuting Christians and they left in thousands, you know, uh, to around the world, especially in South and, in South and, uh, and Central America, where it was easy to bring your cousin, your brother, your family uh, to, to, to the West. And they come and they stay. And still, Palestinian Muslims, they, they feel they, they go back, but they get a chance to go back more than Palestinian Christians because Palestinian Christians have to spread Christianity in the Christian world, supposedly, they, they, can, uh, they can make it Assimilate easier. Right. Yeah. Well, okay, tell us, uh, I want to leave you with this. Uh, I know you have a conference coming up or some kind of event. Uh, I think you told me once in December you have something going on in Bethlehem, unless I have it completely wrong. Or And also I'd like you to touch upon, uh, there are, I know, for example, Americans or Ameri- uh, uh, Palestinian Americans who are Christian who may want to join your group. So go take a take a trip over there and want to associate with you, how could they do that? I mean, you know, we have a program for all people, you know, we have pilgrimages, we have uh, where, where Americans can join us from our pilgrimage, pilgrimage point, joint pilgrimage, and they can, they can go there, you know, you can, you can check our website, sbf.org, you can find all type of programs. Yes, we have on 3rd of December, we are bringing a thousand kids from around the, from 